I can't believe this story. I, I, maybe it has changed while I am talking to you. There's always the possibility that stories are breaking. Brandon Miller, who is an elite talent for the Alabama Crimson Tide of basketball. Uh, yesterday, news broke via testimony that at 1.30 in the morning, and I think I have a screenshot of this text message that I want to read to you. At 1.30 in the morning, according to Darius Miles' defense attorney, Darius Miles was the Alabama player who's been charged with murder. Uh, Miles texted Miller, Brandon Miller, at 1.38 a.m. the morning of the shooting. Again, this is 1.38 in the morning. I need my joint, a N-word, just got a faking. Now, look, I am told, all right, joint means gun, and uh, just got a faking, I'm reading from this, they're faking, which means they were threatened, right? Uh, and they said, uh, they said, yes, I looked it up, it's an urban dictionary. At 2 a.m., thereabouts, there was a shooting. So Brandon Miller got texted at 1.38 a.m. from his teammate, basically, and I'm paraphrasing, I need my gun because somebody has threatened me. 1.38 a.m. He could have texted back, hey, leave. (laughs) Bro, you're drunk. It's 1.38 in the morning. Go to bed. Stay out of trouble. We're in the middle of the season. Instead, Brandon Miller got in his car, drove this gun to his teammate, parked his car in a way that blocked the exit of this individual in the car, and then Miles' friend got the gun and went and fired five shots into the car, killing a mother of a five-year-old little boy. If Brandon Miller had simply not responded to this text, that mom of this five-year-old would still be alive. If Brandon Miller had simply responded to his teammate's text from 1.38 in the morning by saying, get out of there, you don't need a gun, you don't need to have any kind of confrontation, we're in the middle of the season, make a smart decision. If Brandon Miller had left the gun in his apartment, and driven there, and picked up his teammate, and brought him back home, that woman would still be alive. Brandon Miller made a decision to bring a loaded handgun to his teammate when he knew that the teammate was both drunk and feeling threatened, meaning he was bringing a weapon late at night after everybody had been drinking to a corner of a downtown street. That was negligent behavior. That was behavior that was reckless. In my opinion, that was by Brandon Miller in conjunction with leaving his car blocking the exit, according to reports, of that street. That was criminal behavior. Okay? I don't know why he didn't get charged. I suspect it's because he's a star basketball player and he was being protected as a result of that. That's my theory. That's my surmisal. Most people, I think, would be charged with an accessory to a crime at minimum for that behavior because of the reckless and negligent behavior in bringing a loaded handgun to a teammate at 2 a.m. in the morning when that teammate has said he needed his gun because he felt threatened. Okay? At a minimum, I am stunned beyond belief that having seen these facts in the light of day, as occurred yesterday, that Nate Oates, the head coach of Alabama, that Greg Byrne, the athletic director of Alabama, that the university president of Alabama would allow Brandon Miller to still be a scholarship representative of the Alabama men's basketball team is a failure on all fronts by the University of Alabama. And some people who are Alabama fans, who are pretty much the only people defending Alabama at any point, have been sliding into my DMs, and they've been sending me angry emails, and they've been saying, how dare you have this opinion 
oh, you just have this opinion because you're a fan of X or Y. No. My opinion's pretty clear. If you engage in violent behavior or you aid and abet violent behavior that leads in a death, in a murder of an innocent mother, you should not be a representative of any athletic program in the country, period. This is an easy call. And if Nate Oates or Greg Byrne or the University of Alabama president knew about all these details beforehand and still allowed Brandon Miller to play, I think they should all be fired because their judgment is not strong enough to allow them to be the leader of men. And if you are making a decision, and I'm speaking specifically to Alabama fans right now who are by and large behaving like a bunch of ignoramuses on Twitter, okay? If you are defending Brandon Miller over this, you're an embarrassment. You are an embarrassment to college fans everywhere. Because what you are trying to say is you care more about your team than you do the life of an innocent woman that one of your star players helped to take. And I've been saying this for years. Imagine what your response would be if this happened at Auburn. Every Alabama fan on the planet wanted Cam Newton to not be able to play for the Auburn football team because he allegedly took $180,000 or maybe more in payment to go to Auburn the year that they won the national championship. How can you be convinced that Cam Newton shouldn't play because he might have gotten improper benefits while simultaneously defending one of your players who aided and abetted in the murder of an innocent mom. That, my friends, is indefensible. And what I ask so many sports fans all the time to do is imagine that your most hated rival engaged in the behavior that your players did. What would your perspective be? If an Auburn star basketball player did everything that Brandon Miller did and he was still playing, every single Alabama fan on the planet would be talking about how dirty Auburn is. If a University of Tennessee player did it, if a University of Florida player did it, any Alabama rival, Ole Miss, LSU, you name it, Texas A&M, Texas, soon to be Texas, any of those schools had the exact same fact pattern, fact pattern in play, Alabama fans would be the first ones to talk about how dirty it is. I frankly find it shameful of the University of Alabama, the way they've behaved here, and the fact that they keep having to put out new statements claiming they didn't know about these facts. Well, now you do. The facts are out there. And let me also just say this. I love... The idea that some of you Twitter lawyers are like, you're going to get sued. Bring it on, brother. Do you think that I'm afraid of getting sued for telling you exactly what I think? Especially when it's rooted directly in fact. Do you think that I am afraid of whether people are lined up to support me or not? Whether you love me or hate me? I've never in my life given an opinion and given a flip whether anybody supports me or not. I tell you exactly what I believe and I do it without fear or favor. So let me tell you this, Alabama fans. You guys are not only embarrassing yourselves, you're embarrassing your state, you are embarrassing your region, and you are embarrassing your conference. What Brandon Miller did is indefensible and the fact that he is still on scholarship and still, frankly, even able to enroll at the University of Alabama is a disgrace, and anyone defending him is a disgrace too. Roll Tide, bitches.